Okay, um, we are at Act 14 now. Uh, we'll see what happens. We saw how um, the initial welcome turned to um, envy, and uh, Barnabas and Paul were expelled out of Antioch of Syria. They moved to a place called Iconium. Uh, we have already seen the picture of the first missionary journey, but just for um, us to register, you know, once again, uh, let me quickly show you that picture and then we will continue. Okay, so here we are. We've seen uh, how Antioch to Seleucia, and then we saw how a little bit of ministry preaching happened in Salamis, then Paphos. Um, uh, that's the point where we had John Mark, uh, we, we had the ministry to Sergius Paulus, and then from here, you know, uh, they go to Perga, but uh, from here, you have uh, John Mark departing from them, but they still continue. They move on to Antioch of uh, Sidia. Good ministry takes place here, but uh, you know uh, uh, the Jews are not willing to listen. So the Gentiles are uh, the new audience. And from here, they are expelled. So now they're coming to Iconium. And then we'll see from Iconium, they'll move to Lystra, Derby, and then you know the same way back. They are going to come back to Antioch, the base church. So I also want to encourage us, you can study from a, a publication, APC publication named Revivals, Visitations and Moves of God, uh, the Book of Acts, because the Book of Acts is a revival that took place with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the kind of revelation of uh, scripture, uh, the the way you know God uh, worked through the believers at that time, and uh, the gospel went out to different regions. So it is uh, a revival. So it's covered in this book, and. Uh, you know, for paucity of time, I am not sharing all the details, you know, with you uh, uh, from this book. But uh, if you can study that chapter, I think it would be uh, chapter three, if I'm not wrong, uh, in, in that book, Revivals, Visitations and Moves of God. You have many more details. You have many more details. Um, uh, chapter two, actually, it's uh, the title of that chapter is uh, Journey Through the Book of Acts. So you have many more details, timelines, um, and also descriptions of the cities. I shared a little bit about the Church of Antioch, but about the city of Antioch uh, and all of that. So you know that can make for your additional uh, reading okay so please make sure that uh, you you look it up okay let's move on now uh, we are here now at acts uh, 14 so this is this place is known as iconium what's going to take place over here from verse 1 now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, uh, uh, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, believed. Okay, praise God. You know, there is some acceptance. Both Jews and Greeks are believing. Verse 2. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Unfortunately, there were some unbelieving Jews in the group. And they start to, uh, you know, speak against, and as it is mentioned here, poison the minds against the brethren. Verse 3, therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So the ministry is continuing the way Jesus did. Remember when we started the book of Acts, we said that uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus preached uh, and he did. Right? He healed. He he demonstrated the works of power. So what kind of ministry are his disciples involved in? Same kind of ministry, preaching and demonstrating the kingdom of God. So you notice we don't have the list of all the wonders, signs which Barnabas and Paul did, but they did. Because we have a mention here, granting signs and wonders to be done uh, by their hands. So God was faithful to uh, reveal his power through his ministers. Verse 4, 
but the multitude of the city was divided part sided with the jews and part with the apostles so remember uh, there were some of these unbelieving jews so what happened there was a division in the city some were okay with the message of paul and barnabas the others they sided with the unbelieving jews so obviously there's tension right there's tension there was tension in antioch now there is tension in iconium verse 5 and when a violent attempt was made by both the gentiles and jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them so there are these unbelieving people what are, what are they doing now they've come to the extent of abusing and stoning them okay so it's really bad iconium their experience is turning out to be uh i don't know if they were mentally prepared for this form of opposition okay and for paul uh it's nothing new because he was a part of such uh you know persecution earlier on he was on the other side though but now he is at the receiving end uh, and you know they are being abused they are being stoned and verse 6 says they became aware of it and fled to lystra and derby so you see how even the adverse circumstances are pushing them in a certain route and a direction so out of iconium they go to lystra and a derby so uh, these cities of lyconia so basically it's it's part of that region and to the surrounding region and they were preaching the gospel there so uh, due to circumstances and we've discussed this earlier you know uh, louis also brought it up we know that what's going on is not good but god is a god who can accomplish his purposes despite the challenges that we face okay uh, but we just have to remain in faith and god can still do it so opposition is there but they are continuing in the work of the ministry moving on verse 8 they come to the next place lystra what happens in lystra okay let's see uh, and in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. Okay, does that ring a bell? Yeah, it does, because we can recall such a thing happened. Uh, uh, a lame man in Acts chapter 3, you know, that was uh, Peter ministering. And here is Paul in Acts 14. Uh, reaching out to a man who is crippled from his mother's womb who had never walked okay so similar isn't it but the power of god is available you know for any kind of miracle at any point in time so this time around through paul what happens verse 9 this man heard paul speaking paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed okay very beautiful okay so you you got to see this there there are some differences in that miracle that took place in acts 3 and here uh, uh, you know again acts uh, 14 so in this case faith is built up in this man who is listening it was not the case in Acts 3. They just saw this beggar and they said silver and gold we don't have. But he had an expectation. We don't know if his expectation was for uh, healing or not. But something supernatural was administered to that man. Okay, But in this case, faith is being built up in the crippled man. Because verse 9 says, this man heard Paul speaking. Faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god so there is a preparation so we've got to understand that when we share the word when we preach the word and that is why many a time in our churches in our services we share on a particular subject maybe we are sharing about healing and then we pray for healing what happens people begin to receive healing because faith is built up by the word of god and then it is easier for people to receive because their faith has been lifted up. So that is the principle that we see in this case. The man, this man heard Paul speaking. So when we speak, when we minister, what should happen? Faith should be built up. 
in the hearts of people. That's when they will receive the works of God in their lives. So faith was built up in this man. And notice, it also says, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Okay, wonderful. Discerning that comes by the Holy Spirit. So Paul is able to discern. How can you look at people's faces and tell whether or not faith is there in their hearts? You need a spiritual discernment. And so Paul had that. So, and as he looked at this man, he could see, see what see, physical see, visually, you know, with his natural eye. No, spiritual perception. He could see that faith was there in this man to be healed. And so he makes use of the opportunity. Okay, what does he do? He said with a loud voice, stand up, straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Amazing, isn't it? So earlier, we saw Peter, he held that man and strength came to his feet, is what uh, you know the Bible says. But in this case, Pete, Paul commands with a loud voice. He just commands. So uh, when we study about healing and deliverance, there are different ways in which we have to declare, you know, proclamation and action. When we do the key, when we've done the keys to supernatural ministry, we've learned about that. So we declare it. We proclaim it. And then, you know, we've got to do the action. So in the case of uh, uh, Peter, he did it. He held that man uh, and strength came to his feet. He raised him up. In this case, there was a proclamation and the action was, you know, on the part of the, the person who received the healing. He leaped and walked. So that person, I, I believe, he had the faith and he probably just tried to get up. Uh, according to what had been spoken over him, and he was able to walk. So, so this is spectacular. A man who has never walked is now walking. So what is going to be the response? Are the people of Lystra going to be more receptive of Paul and Barnabas? Let's see. Verse 11. Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. So. These people had a concept, okay, a belief in which they, they thought, you know, it's like Greek mythology. They believed that gods became humans from time to time and they performed miracles and, you know, did things among the people. And so when the miracle happened, they knew that this was not, you know, part of their dimension. This had to be supernatural. So they came up with an explanation. What was that exclamation? Uh, explanation. The explanation was that these two people, Paul and Barnabas, are gods. Okay. So uh, for any minister of God, you know, it's sort of, it boosts your ego. When somebody looks at you and says, oh, wow, you know, you, you're so powerful. You're so anointed. You're so mighty. Okay. And in this case, the highest kind of applause that uh, uh, these men could get, they are called gods. And people are saying gods have come in the likeness of men. So are Paul and Barnabas going to be very happy about uh, this response or what are they going to do? Verse 12, Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. So they've given them names also. Okay? Uh, uh, apparently the, the person with authority, there was a god called Zeus, and they felt that Barnabas fit that role. Uh, and since Paul was a speaker, they had another god, you know, Hermes. They gave that name to Paul. Then more things are being done. Verse 13, the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitude. So the multitudes are now beginning to worship Paul and Barnabas as gods. Verse 14, the reaction or the response of Paul and Barnabas. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea and all the things that are in them who is bygone, in bygone generations, allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. 
nevertheless he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling out our filling our hearts with food and gladness and with these sayings they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them so when they are getting this god like treatment paul and barnabas faithful servants of god you know as they are they are so upset you know, remember even peter did that and he said why are you looking at us as if we did these miracles so the believers in the book of acts give us a a good um, standard to live by whenever supernatural things take place from our lives we must be careful to give god the glory you know uh, we must be careful to give th thanks to god and when people start putting uh, the ministers on a pedestal we have to clarify and say what has taken place is by the power of uh, you know the name of jesus the uh, uh, the power of uh, god and it's not us who have done the supernatural work and that is how paul and barnabas respond to this very situation uh, and you also notice that they try to actually preach to them about the nature of god they talk about god as a creator so that the minds and hearts of the people move towards worshiping god instead of you know their own um, you know philosophies and their own imaginations uh, and, and you know all their stories about gods coming as humans so you notice how uh, the ministry which is being done is so much in context you don't see paul break out with scriptures and you know talk about abraham because this group in lystra may not have understood they are uh, uh you know their their mindset about god is something completely different okay so they are talking to these people in their own language and trying to make them understand the god that we are talking about he is not a finite god he is the creator he is this great god and glory should go to him not to us who are his ministers okay uh, and so paul and barnabas do their best to stop these people from worshiping them so verse 18 it says and with these sayings they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them so it just shows us that there was chaos the people in lystra were still sacrificing and treating paul and barnabas as gods okay now unfortunately you know you have the the crowds which went against paul and barnabas from antioch iconium following them you know to lystra and uh, they begin to stir things up against um, this ministry team so in verse 19 then the jews from antioch and iconium came there and having persuaded the multitudes look at the multitudes you know that is why we say you know don't just go by popular opinion don't just go by what people say about you because one day they say wonderful things you know they are saying oh you are gods this and that next day being convinced by uh, people from antioch and iconium what happens they stoned paul and dragged him out of the city supposing him to be dead same multitudes they are sacrificing to them saying oh you are gods then they are stoning so you know it's really a lesson for us that we should always look to god and who god says uh, we are our strength must come from there you know people their opinions will change but that must not affect uh, our identity in christ neither should it affect our assignment in christ but we carry on we carry on uh, doing what god wants us to do and notice here paul pays a very heavy price okay uh, they have been ill treated all along they were ill treated expelled we read in uh, antioch that doesn't sound nice at all uh, even iconium right iconium uh, they began to have all kinds of uh, opposition rising up abuse and stone okay so that happened but here in lystra it's worse he was stoned so badly and they had this practice apparently that when somebody is stoned really badly they have to be taken out of the city so we can imagine that paul was 
hurt very badly no wonder he was dragged out and we are told supposing him to be dead so you know again when uh, uh, commentators write some of them say that he was probably dead because uh, the stoners knew which you know when to drag a body out of the city so some commentators say that paul was probably dead that is why he was dragged out of the city some others say no he was just badly injured and it looked like he was dead so we don't know because luke doesn't tell us exactly uh, uh, what the situation was but the onlookers felt that paul was dead after the stoning so he was dragged out of the city verse 20 very amazing so you see in the book of acts you see the power of a the power which is released when a community seeks god in acts 12 we saw how the believers prayed for peter okay and uh, a supernatural deliverance took place uh, he was brought out of the prison now another minister of god paul he's badly stoned was he dead was he very very uh, you know uh, uh, I, i mean I, i he he was um, in a bad shape we don't know exactly what happened but verse 20 says however when the disciples gathered around him he rose up and went into the city and the next day he departed with barnabas to derby amazing very quickly okay luke did not bother to explain himself further he's just saying look whatever was paul's situation the disciples gathered around him gathered around him what do we uh, you know uh, understand this as obviously they would have prayed right they would have prayed for paul now whether he was uh, fully distorted broke it or he was dead whatever did paul rise from the dead we don't know we can't tell that uh, exactly but we know that whatever condition paul was in the power of god worked in his body okay so when we pray for people today we have the confidence god can restore the wounds he can you know bring healing to to um, you broken flesh broken bones uh you, whatever maybe he was dead god brought resurrection life to paul we don't know but can our god do it yes he can do it because he said that you know i am the god that healeth thee he is jehovah rafa the lord our healer he is the creator of our bodies he knows how to fix it okay and not only that jesus said i am the resurrection and the life so when believers prayed we don't know whether healing took place or resurrection took place but it took place so even today as we pray we gather together and the disciples gathered around him and we gather around people through our prayer okay uh these things happen and it's so amazing that was a person who was dragged out of the city you you notice in the next couple of sentences and the next day he departed with barnabas to derby it's as simple as that so he was restored back to wholeness it's amazing it's amazing what the power of god did so many things that we read in the book of acts it's not explained in detail but we've got to use our imagination and you know see with with our with our eyes uh what god could have done the wonders god has done the very next day paul is fit enough to continue the missionary journey okay amazing okay truly amazing so he moves to the next place derby all right uh, verse 21 and when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples they returned to lystra remember i mentioned they go to derby that's the last place and then you know just go back to the earlier uh, regions as well why it's not just enough for us to preach the gospel and um you know see believers in different places those believers have to be equipped they have to be discipled uh, they have to uh, you know be 
based on God's call on their lives, we have to raise them up, equip them as ministers of God. So there's a lot of work to do. So you see the approach of the leadership in the book of Acts. They are not just content with the fact that, oh, we have 100 believers, wonderful, praise the Lord, let's go home now. Let's just go back to Antioch. No, they want to make sure that the people who have believed in Jesus are doing okay. How is their spiritual health? What more can we impart to them? Uh, is there any more learning which they require? So many things to think about when you have a set of believers. So that's a very pastoral heart. Okay, so very pastoral heart. The apostolic way is, yeah, you go, go to the new regions, go to the new regions. But there are believers now, but that's not the end of the story. We have to build them up. So you see that pastoral heart. So they go back. They return to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. Is it dangerous to go back to these places? Very much. There are, uh, you know, uh, people in authority, Jews, who don't like them. But it was important that Paul and Barnabas go and you know, take stock of how are these believers doing uh, and you know what can we do for them. So they're being faithful ministers in that sense. So they're taking care of these believers. Um, and moving on, verse 22, it says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So they're bringing encouragement. There is a lot of persecution and especially in the time of persecution, they felt it's important for us to encourage, let's encourage these believers so that they don't give up following after God. Yes, there will be trials, there will be challenges, but through all this, you know, we must uh, keep moving forward as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. Okay, verse 23. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So you notice all these practices of the early church. So they visited, they strengthened, they encouraged. Now what? Appointed elders. So, so far, we didn't read about elders or anything. We just read about volunteers in Act 6. Now suddenly... There is a need for elders. Why? Because these guys will move on. Paul and Barnabas are going to leave the city and they will continue in their ministry. But there's got to be somebody who will provide spiritual oversight. So, elders for the church. Who are elders? Not necessarily by age, but spiritual maturity. People who can continue to lead the others in this path of discipleship. So elders were appointed. What other practices do we see? Prayer, fasting, committing people to the Lord, right? So these were things that Paul and Barnabas did uh, in their first missionary journey as they returned. Now verse 24, and after they had passed through Sidia, they came to Pamphylia. Now when they had Preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. So there's a little bit of ministry that was happening there as well, but we don't have the details of what exactly they did. So Perga, Atalia, uh, verse 26, from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had uh, been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. So where did all this begin? Acts chapter 13. It began there. They were in Antioch of Syria. So they've finished that trip and come back to their base church. Verse 27. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that, they, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So, you know, usually this happens, right? Like when we go on missions or um, when we uh, take a trip to minister to others, we always come back to our group and we say, hey, you know what happened? And we begin to report. We begin to share with them. These are all the wonderful things God has done. These are the key things that, uh, uh, you know, he led us into. So that's exactly what this missions team is doing. They're letting the others, 
th probably the church back home was praying for them. Uh, are we right in saying that Church of Antioch was praying for them? Most, most probably, because we see that practice everywhere. So they must have been praying and they must have been so eager to find out, hey, what happened? Paul, Barnabas, what did God do through you in, in these cities? So they would have said, hey, come on, let's tell you. We've been to these, these, these cities. Uh, you know, all this happened and, uh, you know, uh, God opened the door. Main thing is God opened the door for the Gentiles. Okay, so that's how uh, this first missionary journey uh, culminated. And I, as I shared earlier with all of us, uh, the first missionary journey uh, was for a duration of about two years. Okay, so AD 44 to AD 46. So all this going all over the place, coming back to Antioch took two years. Okay, two years of time. Um, and uh, for now, in Acts 15, they are just there in Antioch church. So Acts 15, they're back in Antioch. So let's pause a little bit and then I will continue with uh, Acts 15. So any thoughts, uh, any points to discuss before we go to? Okay, so uh, yes, uh, Louis, did you raise your hand again or was that the? No, no, no. Oh, you did. Okay. The prolonged okay. production of the one that is gone. All right. Sure. Then we'll we'll uh, hear from say he he's raised his hand. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Pastor. I, I I was just wondering that where was Barnabas in in the midst of all this going on when Paul was stoned? It is it, like I don't know what to say. Whether he left or I don't know. It, it, it's just interesting that he was together with Paul when they called both of them God. I, I may be mistaken, but it seems like Barnabas just left Paul alone. I don't know. What do you think, Ma? Uh, yeah, I think we should ask Barnabas, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we're not able to ask him. Uh, so let's make an assumption. I, I, what I feel is maybe the disciples would have somehow rescued Barnabas. Is what I felt. The the mob uh, would have gone crazy. Paul got caught in it, but Barnabas was probably rescued temporarily, and then he joins him. You know, once Paul is back. Okay, I, mean, I think that's a good explanation. Okay, <laughs> just uh, an explanation from our imagination. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Louis. Um, just, I don't know, um, maybe it's just the future of the temperament. Uh, like Peter was always very upfront, you know, he was very vocal. Um, so when they get to a place, maybe because of um, Paul's temperament, temperament, he was the one that always was the vocal one, and Barnabas was just like the lead back one so uh, when it comes to the things that have to be confrontation com being confrontational with the jews um what's his name uh, paul was always in that in that thing so maybe from a human perspective barnabas started feeling like you know it's like paul is now the sea, um overseer of this ministry you know maybe and, and towards the end they had that clash because of um john mark and they went their separate ways so sometimes maybe it's just just i'm just trying to from a human perspective um at that point in time it's been going on so much that Barnabas was never head of after then again just just a thought yeah sure uh louis and that that is a very important uh, point actually because we we can see a, a a huge difference in the personalities of um you know paul and barnabas yeah, the kind of accommodating and I am assuming, you know, gentle person that Barnabas was. Paul is very, you know, he's very passionate, zealous guy. Uh, and uh, in Lystra, he he was the one who was named Her Hermes. Yeah, Hermes, because he was speaking a lot. So uh, probably, you know, Paul 
somehow became that central person that people went against and uh, you know the ministry became more about paul leading it so yeah personality differences correct so uh, if if ever anyone you know thinks of making a movie or something we I mean, know we already have one uh, acts of the apostles but uh, just with all this additional uh, imagination so that would be interesting to to watch okay so uh, let's use our imagination okay so as these things unfold so thank you uh, everyone for sharing your views um, we can continue we can continue um, acts 15 okay uh, now for I just want to uh, clarify that uh, some portions like what we were speculating just now what happened to Barnabas we don't have the we may not get the right answer for that so whatever each one of us shared is is just a possibility okay it's just a possibility um so yeah so some things will will remain in that realm alone we don't know accurately you know what exactly took place so coming to 15 now so what's happening in 15 uh acts 15 is something we have talked about earlier so uh you know hopefully this will be easy to understand uh, verse one and certain men came down from judea and taught the brethren unless you are circumcised according to the custom of moses you cannot be saved so everything is going amazingly well in antioch and now come people with wrong teaching okay so that is uh you know it, it's uh, not pleasant at all so let's see what the team of elders at antioch do uh, when wrong teaching comes in verse 2 therefore when paul and barnabas had uh, therefore when paul and barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them they determined that paul and barnabas and certain others of them should go up to jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question so uh, in antioch when the wrong teaching comes in through these men from Judea, thankfully, people like Paul and Barnabas are, you know, they are proclaimers of the word. They are teachers. Remember, we saw that team. You have Manian, Simon, uh, Lucius. So these people know the scriptures really well. So verse 2 tells us that they had a, a, a very big quarrel. Okay. So terms like uh, dissension, dispute. And it says, not it was not a small dissension and dispute so paul and barnabas we could say that they were very angry at the wrong teaching that had entered the church why did this teaching come to the church of antioch it was a gentile church you know uh, primarily and so uh, here are men from judea bringing a law upon the uh, a gentile congregation what is that unless you are circumcised according to the custom of moses you cannot be saved so they're putting in another prerequisite for salvation what is that it's not good enough to believe in your heart confess with your mouth but you also need to be circumcised if you're not a jew you're not circumcised but you get circumcised then you get saved so Paul and Barnabas were so upset with this kind of a wrong teaching uh, that had come into the church. They were angry. They quarreled with these men. And they were so upset that they wanted to get this, uh, get the record straight. So they go to Jerusalem to clarify matters with, you know, the ultimate authorities at that point, apostles in Jerusalem. Apostles and notice by now, uh, Luke is saying apostles and elders. This concept of elders had come into the church by now. Okay. So apostles and elders, they go there to get their opinion. What do you say about this new teaching? Verse 3. So being sent on their way uh, by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. You know, it's like... Uh, uh, amazing they are going to jerusalem to clarify a matter but en route 
they can't keep quiet they're continuing the work of the ministry they they must have taught and they must have uh, you know shared reported encouraged the believers in places like phoenicia and samaria and you read there was great joy to all the brethren so uh, it, it's nice to see this kind of passion among the believers and the leaders was for and when they had come to jerusalem okay so finally they reached their destination they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders so you see the whole the uh, the the entire um, set uh, that they wanted to to visit so there's the congregation there's the apostles there's the elders so they come there and they reported all the things that god had done with them but some of the sect of the pharisees who believed rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of moses so even in the church of jerusalem there were some believers who had come from a very traditional background okay pharisees pharisees we know they had all these rules and uh, they kept the laws so though they have become believers you know sometimes it happens isn't it we become believers and there is a kingdom mindset there is a kingdom lifestyle but we can get stuck in our customs and traditions which don't match the kingdom mindset and the kingdom lifestyle so what's happening to these believers in jerusalem they're bringing in their background and they're saying yeah what is wrong with the teaching it is necessary to circumcise according to the law of moses and even believers are saying what this wrong teaching is saying you know which made paul and barnabas angry so what is the decision that is going to be taken regarding this matter verse 6 now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter okay so there's a lot of confusion now uh, uh, let the leaders you know take up this matter and think about it and share with you know the 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 congregation and the uh, churches involved what about circumcision is circumcision necessary for somebody to be saved verse 7 and when there had been much dispute so it was not an easy matter even in the council of the apostles elders and uh, you know paul barnabas there's a lot of tension how what do we do many gentiles are coming to know the lord uh, should we tell them to be circumcised there's a lot of confusion it says much dispute argument quarreling okay even among the leaders they don't know what to uh, come up with so you have peter based yeah, on his personality peter rose up and said to them so peter tries to bring a solution for this problem he says men and brethren you know that a good while ago god chose among us that by mouth by my mouth the gentile should hear the word of the gospel and believe so where when did this happen cornelius remember cornelius when he had to explain to the listeners and say god gave the vision and that's why i went and you see god poured out the holy spirit so god is working among the gentiles how can we say uh, that you know this this is not acceptable so he reminds them god is moving among the gentiles okay and he has used me also with the gentiles verse 8 so god who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving them the holy spirit just as he did to us and made no distinction between us and them purifying their hearts by faith now therefore why do you test god by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear but we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ we shall be saved in the same manner as they so is encouraging the church and saying look gentiles are getting saved this is a move of god this is a move of god and god is working among them so you know we sh- we should not make it more difficult for the gentiles okay sometimes what happens in churches god is ready to bring in you know groups of people into his kingdom but the believers make it more difficult we put rules we say no 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 you should stand like this you should talk like this you should sit like this all these rules 
which have not been mentioned in scripture for us so that's what peter is saying why are we making it difficult for the gentile believers and bringing in something like circumcision circumcision yes it is there in the uh, old covenant but jesus didn't teach us this for salvation so why are we making it difficult so thankfully after peter spoke verse 12 then all the multitude kept silent and listened to barnabas and paul declaring how many miracles and wonders god had worked through them among the gentiles so all of them are trying to convince the leadership here and say god is working among the gentiles okay and circumcision was never an issue verse 13 and after they had become silent james answered saying okay so now james will bring a conclusion to this matter um and uh, you know he will settle the matter with the final decision that circumcision is not a prerequisite for salvation among the gentiles so what do we see here basically a leadership structure has emerged okay earlier peter was making the decisions one person leader oh peter we think you are our leader just tell us what to do but now after about um, you know uh, two decades the dynamics has changed peter cannot make the decision alone there is the set of apostles you have elders uh, you you have uh, leaders from the church of antioch you have leaders from other churches everyone is discussing so we call this the jerusalem council so this is another another structure of leadership that you see emerging in the church how are decisions being taken there is a council everyone discusses and then they come out with a decision but who gives the final word there james james is now the leader of the church so this james is the half brother of jesus who is the leader of the church we saw another james who um, was killed by herod who was the son of zebedee okay so we'll come back and we'll pick up from um james's uh, decision here in the next class so i know we haven't prayed but uh, could somebody please pray so that we can wrap up today's class Okay, Siddhant, do you please pray? Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for everything, Lord. Lord, we believe the Spirit is working in us. Lord, we thank you for all things. Thank you for the teaching. Lord, thank you for building us. Thank you for each one, each one of us. Thank you for your goodness, mercy. We honor you, Lord. We surrender everything to you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sudan. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a, a wonderful weekend. We will meet again next week. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you too.